while the sun is shining Life goes on while so many dying So many crying while so many smiling The flowers are dancing cause the season's timely I'm trying to pull you out of Babylon, but you won't listen, heed his instructions. But on the inside you are broken mm-hmm. A false sense of freedom you betray Daughter, I see straight through it all Through it all You keep making excuses Holding hands with them demons Burdens weighing you down, yeah Pride will let you confess what you do when no one's around It's like pulling teeth to let go of that which has you bound Don't choose death over life when you're at a nine Want you to be free, yeah uh-huh. Totally free indeed, yeah uh-huh. His warning goes out before destruction Would you please heed the call? His arms are stretched out to you to pull you out of Babylon. I'm trying to pull you out of Babylon, yeah. but you won't listen. Need his instructions. Yeah. He wants you to open and feel your heart, your but heart. you won't surrender. No. But you surrender. Sure. 
about yourself and holding in your anger You look up in the mirror, see a stranger I'm speaking cause so many got the same hurt How long will you wait to stay up in this state? How long will it take for you to see the pain? Avoiding all the pain Cause deep down you feel ashamed You acting like you're strong But when you cry it falls like rain You cry when you Your back against the wall You're fighting your depression It expresses through your wall express it through your wall But you don't wanna look so You don't wanna look so You're holding all these burdens I'm just trying to get them all I'm trying to See and hear me. I don't know if y'all heard me try to say. Y'all, let me know if you can see and hear me. <laughs> I thought my phone came to me. Yeah. <laughs> that register was kind of high for you. <laughs> I'll try to get up now. I'm trying to get up now. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me get my shalom's out. My shalom. My shalom. All right. Daughter is at the top. Shalom Zipporah. Shalom Marsha Skinner. Shalom Gabira. Gabira, how about shalom, ma? Shalom Yariel, Shalom or Parade, Shalom Trinity, 6697. Okay then. Shalom Selah. Shalom Camila the Doula. Shalom I, I don't know why I said that like that. I'm sorry. Shalom Abshalom. Shalom. Ooh, we. I'm finna tear that name up. That's a new name right there. I don't wanna cuss. Uh <laughs> Oh, Sithra, y'all. Sithra, y'all. Praise you, Husha. Uh, okay, hallelujah. Uh, Shalom, Bathsheba, Vlada, and Takaya, Ivan, Sister Pauline, Shalom, uh, Shaddai, Shalom, Maria, Shalom, Pedrick, Shalom, Uzi, Shalom, Monica, Shalom, Nisa, Yah, Shalom, Waikisha, Shalom, Yehukana, Shalom, <laughs> Yehuda, Shalom. That's Moko. Shalom, Adrian. Shalom, Rick. Shalom, Gadola Adira. Shalom, uh, Tavia. Uh, Shalom, R. Scott. Shalom, Akoti. El Shiva. Shalom, Yermayahu. Shalom, AJ. Shalom, uh, Rakam. Shalom, Linda. Linda. Shalom, Matapata. Shalom, Brenda. Uh, Yahuwah's child. Shalom, Kendrick. Lamarck. Shalom. I am Shanice, Shalom, Gadon G, Shalom, uh, uh, Miriam, Shalom, Isla, Shalom, Ama, Ayan, Amunya, hope all is well, Shalom, Yaki, Shalom, Shakar, Ganon, 
Shalom, Mushala, Kana, Shalom, Victor, Shalom, Watsina, Shalom, Shemshon, Shalom, Arscott, Shalom, Elkadasha, Shalom. Oh man, we got some new people. Y'all changing your name. Ooh, Senya Bula, ooh we, Senya Bula Layla, boy, I know I butchered that. I know I butchered that. Maury DP, Shalom, Adaya, Shalom. You was my rock, Shalom. Prince Hanuk, Shalom. Beth El, Shalom. Yehukana, Shalom. Aksa, Shalom. Oh, Aksa, Shalom, sis. Uh, let's see who else we got. Yeah, Irina. Yehua is my rock. Yahuwah is my strong tower. Yahuwah is my rock. Tamar Shalom. Ga'al Shalom. Yuri. Shalom. Mushal. Sarai Yahu. Shalom. Moray. Yashak. Shalom. Mahaya. Shalom. Kings and Queens. Raksa Kiwi. Ray. Uh, uh, Gadola. Emet. Lanaya, Yafe, uh, man, let me see. Uh, Hadar Shalom, the Shepherd Shalom, uh, Yukibed Shalom. Where we at here? Alicia Shalom, Amayana Shalom. Mia Creator Shalom, Ivana, Yuhukanai, Uriel Shalom, Nyla. All right, we got everybody in on the Shalom. So I got some new people. I don't remember them names. Uh, I ain't had. I don't think I had trouble with some names in a while. There must be some new people. If you new to the channel with that. What's your name? Praise you. Who's your for? For you. Uh, I'ma let you know. I'ma butcher that till I meet you in person, and you tell me what it is. Uh, <laughs> or it's new, same people that didn't change their name. So, uh, praise you. Who's your for you too? Hallelujah. So we gonna we gonna figure it out together. Just don't get offended. But we gonna figure it out. But I'm a that that one sister Babulaba. That's tough though. I, I know I ain't gonna get that one. Uh, you don't have to let me know about that. But I, I'm just cutting up. I like to cut up sometimes, so don't don't get in your feelings about the name. You know, I, but I know I was gonna butcher that. Praise you, Husha. <laughs> I right, hope everybody doing well. Uh, this Boker, you got that. I got that name right. <laughs> Thought I was gonna cuss. Uh, Sifraya, Sifraya. I am mercy. I ain't want you know that old that old uh cussing spirit try to come back every now and then. You gotta keep them dead, you know. So I want to make sure I don't put no H in front of that thing. <laughs> Praise you. All right. All right, so we're going to talk. I got a little uh, something I've been talking about to the uh, assembly. Um, and, you know, the Ruach gave it to me uh, through visitation. And... Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit on that today, and then we gonna we gonna get on off. I uh, got on here a little bit late, but I, I hope it it uh, it help you, help you overall. All right, so it's gonna deal with the perspective of um, because now we kind of making sure that we're actually doing the the work 
that's supposed to be done when it comes to uh, your life and your healing. Your healing. Um, your ruka, which is means full restoration. The greatest thing that Yahushua desired us to do and to be is to be made whole. Uh, he didn't want broken people. That's why he said in, um, in Yeshayahu 61, Isaiah 61, that the spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he has anointed me to preach through tidings unto the meek and to bind up all the brokenhearted, those that have been broken. And give them beautiful ashes to all the joyful morning and a garment of praise for the rock of heaviness. Um, so, I want you to understand this. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to help me pronounce that. Put all them syllables in that name, though. But I, I want to pronounce it because, you know, I'm trying to get this old cursed dialect <laughs> that's country together. <laughs> get my ancient tone back. So uh, you had to help me with uh, with syllables. If I can say civilize that, uh, if that's a, that ain't even a word, I know I made that up on the spot. But you had to help me with that. One. But anyway, let me get back to my point. But this is the point. Uh, what we got to realize though is our greatest weapon. What would y'all say? is um our greatest weapon against the enemy or against attack of the attack of uh darkness or the attack of evil what would you say is the greatest weapon that we have against the attack of house of time i don't know why my okay so dark All right, the word of y'all, prayer, the word and prayer, uh, prayer and supplication, the arm of y'all, prayer, faith in the word, prayer, word of prayer, praying, praying, being dead to self, all that. All right, now, listen, all those up, nope, ain't nobody that didn't hear able to answer. All this is through. I want you to know the song. All these things you didn't had. You didn't had you, you, you had prayer, you had the fasting, you had the word, and all that. Having that has not been the consistent victory that you didn't had over the attacks of the enemy. And I want to present to you or I want to I want you to understand this the greatest defense against the attack of the enemy is to be made hold whole is your actual healing because if I have the word and not healing I won't last. Even though the word is one of the most powerful things to sharpen any to it. So, so you would say he, has, he magnifies the word above his name. If I'm not made whole, if I'm not healed, then I have the word and it have no effect on my life. Because the enemy will be able to come in at will. And this is what he has done. We have to realize this, right? We have to realize that you have to know your enemy. And when you know the measure of your enemy power, then you can know how to counteract his attacks. You know how the uh, you know the magnitude of what you're fighting against. Therefore, your strategy and your warfare can be more precise. Now we got to realize this: Hasatan has been here before the making of the earth 
because we know that the heavenly host was created before the earth was created. And he'd been here since the beginning of mankind. Now we have to know that Malachim are more wiser, have more strength, uh, have more insight, have more power than how the Most High created man as an entity. That's just a Malachim, but then now you're talking about the uh, anointed cherub that covered that guarded Yahuwah's Kabod. Think about how when you read in Ezekiel how Yahuwah made him and the wisdom was above the Malachim that was there in ranking. Think about that. And think about you outside of the Ruach, outside of the Most High, that only have the capacity to use maybe 10% of your mind fighting against that entity in your own strength. And when I say in your own strength, that means you're doing things based on your wisdom and not the obedience of you. Now think about this. You fighting an ancient being. Now with us, watch this with us. We don't even, as people of the diaspora, it says in Ecclesiastes that uh, oppression makes a wise man go mad. So we're not even dealing with the original state of our mind in the covenant. We're de dealing with layers of generational curses that has been laid upon us and generational dominion when we have been subjected to what an oppressor has developed us to believe in throughout the generations. So you're not even dealing with the full capacity of what you should be using but with your mind because it has been tainted because of oppression. But you're trying to fight an enemy in your own strength. That's ancient. That was here from the first formation of Adam. And crafted out a plan to deceive him. And I want you to see how, how powerful this entity is. If he has enough he's so crafty that he deceive other malachim to be in rebellion with him now think about him you you before yahushua himself it don't get no higher than yahushua it'll get no higher than the the heavenly courts it don't get no greater than that. And you can, inf your influence is so strong that you can influence these other beings. But then you think you got a chance. You think you wise. You think you can withstand The deception, this entity is deception, it lies itself as an entity. And you think in your wisdom, you can just tell him to get under your feet. <laughs> you think you can cast him down. You think in your strip you can bind them. I want
want us to think. Now, this being has things so much on autopilot. He has studied how to, you remember, his only objective is to get better at destroying mankind. That's all his job is. Now, while we focus in on other things in life, that's all he has perfected throughout the centuries. How to corrupt the corruption. That's his only objective. So how much time has he spent on doing that to create a system that can put your generation on autopilot? That says, all I got to do is do this right there and that right there, and you got, you got now for the rest of their life. And all you have to do is just now monitor it. You ain't just got them, but you got their father's, 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 father. You got their mother's, 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 mother. And if you do these certain things, it'll be automatic. And I'm showing you how strong it is automatically. You can see the problems of your father and the problems of your mother, and you can see it and say you don't want to do it and end up being just like that. Because it's automatic. End up doing the same things they're doing. Because this deception. You're not waiting on. You was born into it. And it has to play out in people's lives. And you'll be sitting there wondering. Like what in the world happened. Oh, no. Oh, how Satan did on the side. He said, well, we're going to let them get up to this point. And that's why he's not worried about your awakening process. Because he got you. He ain't concerned about no awakening process. He made you live unto self. He made you worship yourself. And he put the right things in place in your family dynamic. That say, long as I got these strongholds in their life, I can control them. So, yeah, go, go on to Yahushua. Go ahead and wake up. But I still got control. Because I made the right deposits. So therefore I can come for my collection. Because guess what? The wages of sin is what? Death. Let no man say, according to James, let no man say when he is tempted that he's tempted of Yahuwah. But he's tempted when he's drawn away on his own lust. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is actuated, it brings forth death. So if I can get you, not only mess up your dynamic, but if I can get you to sow to your flesh, I can come and collect. I can prosecute you. That's what it calls under the accuser of the brethren in the court of law. I can pros prosecute you and make demands on you because of laws that I caused you to break. And I'm coming to collect on what's mine. So you'll sit there and go through feast days and, and, and all be excited by feasts and did all their praying and all that type of stuff. But he made you sow to your flesh. He made you do certain things that now afterwards he come to, he coming to collect. You'll sit there and you don't know when to collect. You don't know when he's coming to collect. You'll sit there and you'll marry a wife. you marry a husband and, 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 and all of that. And everything be going well for a season. And all of a sudden, they start going spiraling. Like, what in the world going on? Oh, it's something they sold. The accuser of the brother, he says, she mine. I don't care what covenant she says she in. The covenant can't supersede. The boundaries of the consequences of breaking the transgression of laws. So the enemy saying, I'm coming to collect what's mine. I need my wages. They got to pay me. You can have them in the awakening. You can have them worshiping. You can have them praising. You can have them supplicating. But it's going to be an appointed time. Well, they got to come see me. I'll let you go to your appointed times with your most high, your more dean. But, man, you got a more dean. 
and I'm coming to collect on what's mine. Because the wages of sin is death, and you got to pay. You got to pay. That one over there at that feast, that's mine. That one over there in that assembly, that's mine. That one over there that's watching that live, that one's mine. Because I got so much to collect. And you, you, Hoochie, you want me to show you? Indictment number one. Indictment number two. Indictment number three. Indictment number four. And this is what you said in your word. Therefore, they're corruption. And they got to pay. And I'm coming to collect. And he noticed and he systematically set up a system in which he's, he definitely is not omnipresent. So he can't be everywhere at the same time. But he can have the presence of evil monitoring you and waiting on orders to collect what you done sold. And he do it so strong that Hasatan will allow you to feel like you got control over your life. All he want to do is to make you the allure of your own life. And he's secretly putting buttons in you to make you full of yourself. And you'll be worshiping yourself and really worshiping Yahuwah. Because you only, listen to me, you only obey who you worship. And if the default of your relationship with Yahushua is about you, that show you who you worship. If you obey your emotions, if your emotions is your stability, which your emotions was never given to us to be stability, it was just a gauge, how can you make your life decision on something as unstable as your emotions? They up and down. But if I can cause certain things to happen in your life and I have your emotions and I make you live by that, I'll make you worship me indirectly by worshiping yourself because it don't matter what the words say when you mad it don't matter what the words say when your feelings hurt it don't matter what the words say when you feel like there's an injustice you ain't studying no word that word ain't coming to your mind you enter a cocoon of hibernation of self what they did to me how this was done wrong what that was that? Everything is me, 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 me. You ain't thinking about the word. And if something happened even in your marriage, if something happened with you and a sister, and something happened to your husband and a wife, and they do something in your mind to you, you'll spend all year thinking about you. You don't realize that this husband, this wife made a covenant with you, who were before they made me, before they married me. And they messed up on Yahushua. And you ain't worried about how Yahushua feel. You just looking at what they done to me. So you just want it back. You just want it back right for yourself. The enemy boy, listen, I, I don't I know Hasatan ain't nothing to play with. I know, listen, I need the Ruach HaKadosh. I need Yahuwah so I won't be deceived. Because scripture, the, the, even Yahushua said that even the very elect would be deceived if it was possible if it wasn't for his his uh his love for us psh, we wouldn't have a chance and you around here making decisions based on your feelings not taking every thought into captivity judging every thought seeing where every thought come from where did this, who sent this thought? Where's this thought come from? You just, all these things just flooding your mind. And you just letting, you signing for everything. Every thought that come to the door, you ring the doorbell, you open the door. Yep, I'm going to sign for that. Yep, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. Every thought. Look at you. Look at your life. You're committed to you. Rather than you should. And he got you, bro. He got you. That's why I tell myself, hey, bro, shut up. 
hey, we not, nah, man, we ain't thinking like that. Listen, I don't make decisions based on what you think and how you feel. But the word is the only thing that can keep us from darkness. It's the only light that we have. Now, when you look at how powerful this being is, you realize you don't have a chance against him without Yahushua. That means now I'm going to be vigilant about my life because really, going back to the thoughts, remember, every thought has a destination in which it's trying to take you. This is why you, I used to teach this a long time ago. This is why you have to ask yourself, where is where are my thoughts taking me? I got to sit back and think about what I'm thinking about. What is the destination of this thought? If I receive this thought, where what is the end goal of it? Because if you're not looking at the end goal of it of these thoughts, it's like somebody leading you with a blindfold. And you not knowing the destination. Because whatever you continuously see, whatever you continuously hear, you become. What are you becoming because of the thoughts you are allowing to re register that you don't have to receive? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's 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 get to it. Now, this entity has been set up, and its full purpose is to corrupt the creation. It's to steal, kill, and destroy from your life. It's to destroy your uh, awakening. That your whole walk be corrupted. And how do I know a walk is corrupted? A halakha, your pathway, your walk is corrupted. It's Listen, your walk is not corrupted if you're doing nothing but evil, right? You're already evil. But if your walk is off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on, up and down, then corruption is destroying your path. All right, let's get to this. Let's get to this. Let's get to this. I, I want you to see the magnitude of what you're fighting. Now, I said that to get to this point. Remember, Hasatan's job is to put things on autopilot. Now, the great again, the greatest weapon against the forces of darkness. Number one is your inner healing your full restoration your ability to be made whole because once you heal that healing becomes a weapon and Yahushua can weaponize you now if you're not healed the enemy can always come to those dark places in your life and cause you to stumble. He can come and collect. He can still come and, and, and use the effects of that molestation that happened to you and what he planted in you based off of that. They say, I can still control their life now.
Healing is everything. That's why Yahuwah sent us the healer. Yahusha HaMashiach. That's the only way we're getting out of this captivity is we become healed first. Yahusha is not going to redeem a unhealed people. Because there's power in us that has to be unlocked before we get out of here. That, that, that we're going to see the reward of the wicked. And it's a treasure that's buried in us under all that hurt. That's un going to unlock more than saying we Yashraul, more than saying that we Yisrael. It's power that's tied to it. And you look at the promise of the scriptures prophetically, all of them is talking about cleansing of our blood and healing. You sitting there focusing on PowerPoint re presentations, revelation, uh, all these prophetic things, but you ain't healed. And think about, think about the awakening. <laughs> Also, the awakening is based off intellect, based on who can break down what, based on who know more Hebrew than other people know. But everybody's still in prison houses of their soul, promising freedom when they bound, and all they know now is how to connect the prophetic scriptures to prove that you Israel, and say that an enemy is going to die. And you think that's the sum of everything. One of the greatest, one of the greatest things, one of, one of the greatest things that Yahushua said was this. Watch what he said. He said, here comes, watch this now. Here come the God of this world. And he has nothing in me. Wow. He said he has nothing in me. He has nothing that he can come and collect from me. He has nothing that I have made a secret covenant with him by. He has no lies in me. I don't got no hurt, no, no, no effects of bitterness and, and shame and all that type of stuff. Uh, 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 Self-worship. Uh, protecting of myself, self-preservation. He ain't got nothing in me to collect on. He bankrupt. He can't make no withdrawal from a deposit. Nothing. Now I realize in life, life going life is hard, bro. Life gonna come and bust your head. So now, 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 let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. I said all that to get to this point. Let me give you the, the, um, what you have gave me all through visitation, right? If you just take, he began to tell me about the power of piercing. Something piercing you. Something cutting you. Right? He began to show me whenever there's a piercing, there's blood that is drawn from that piercing. And the blood and the, the effect of the piercing and the blood come coming is when we experience pain. The power of the pain becomes a memory that makes this piercing an event that stays locked in our mind and our soul that is called trauma. So there's a piercing or there's an injury. 
that happens. That blood is drawn out in which we experience pain. That pain becomes a memory or a memorial of the event that happened that stays chambered in us that can lock us into this time. And that process of that event is called trauma. Now, when we experience pain, pain moves us. Pain don't keep you stationary. Now, notice I'm talking about from a, a, a soulish place, rock place, natural and spiritual. Pain moves you to a destination so you won't experience that pain again. The pain of the, that's a memory of the event in which what we call in our being trauma moves us into a place of safety in our mind, in our being. That place, place of safety or that safe place in which we feel like that can't happen again really is not a safe place. It's really a prison. Now, watch what I'm saying. There's a piercing or there's an injury which draws blood, which causes pain that becomes a memorable event that is trauma that moves us into what we call a safe place, which in turn really is a prison. Now, let's deal with each thing. Whenever you have a wound or a scar, I have a few scars on my own. Whenever you have a wound or a scar, right, something happened and you're pierced or you're injured, right? If you don't stop everything and pay attention to this injury and put the right prescription, put the right ointment, put the right uh, medicine, antibiotics, whatever it takes, to focus on this specific injury, that wound, a place of piercing, can become infected. And if you ain't careful, that infection can spread throughout the place in your body of where the injury is that might cause more infection and more issues for the body. So now when the enemy has pierced you or injured you, there's an infection that happens and this infection go throughout your life. Now you're living life infected and you're infecting everybody you encounter. Because you never allow yourself to focus on the injury that the enemy caused, that caused the infection that now is traveling throughout your life and most of the things you start, you do well at first, but after a while, the infection comes and you become infected. That means your mind starts going certain places, your emotions, 
your will, all that type of stuff. And then now you start infecting everybody you come in contact with. Or it don't produce righteous fruit. Because why? You still got that infection. Number two. Now that's 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 the infection. Now, now you're infected, but remember, you have a you have pain that has become infused in your memory. There's an event now. So not only is the infection um, killing you, but now something in your memory controls you so now when you get into any particular place in your life because your development stopped there and if anything reminds you or puts you into a place that's close to that event what happens whatever you control by it manifests in if it's anger if it's uh, 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 shouting out because now it's like you have different deja vu experiences and say, man, this is just like this happened because that event is still stuck and you're stuck. So you're infected and you're controlled by a certain event in your life. And in that control, because of that fear, because, because of that pain, it's based in fear. And you have made a declaration. Now, let me show you this. Let me go back. Remember, you got to look at it like this. Whenever there's a cutting of blood, there's a covenant being made. And you got to look at your life. Either you made a covenant with Yahushua or you made a covenant with Hasatan. So he injures you. He's draw blood. He has the memory there in order to bind himself to you and you to him in order to make a covenant with you. How do the covenant happen? You have the blood, but then now you have the oath. What is the oath? I declare that this will never happen to me again. Another man won't do me like this. Another woman won't do me like this. Another uncle won't do me like this. Uh, another job, another ministry. This right here will never happen to me again. So now you have made a declaration with death. And now you have a covenant with darkness to chamber your hurt, to chamber your shame, to chamber, uh, chamber your guilt, all these things are things that control you based on the event, based on your oath. Now we in covenant. And if anything, remind me of this. Protect yourself at all costs. So I have the infection. I have the covenant with the oath, that's the memorable event, and what? You have a memorial to this event, to whatever it is. But then we have the prison house. Because on that day that you made that declaration or you made that oath, remember, after every covenant, the covenant tees, or whoever the covenant is made with, that's lesser becomes a new creation. This is why when we took on the blood of Yahushua and we confessed, we made the oath that he is Adonai, we became a new creation. But when you make a, a covenant with darkness, you become a child of darkness. Now we go to the prison house and the prison house is the false self. So now because the memory of this event, of what has happened, there's a memorial that's controlling me, I have to become something else. I have to become a new person. Now I'm taking on a new identity that's not really me, but this is what is accepted to protect me. 
This is who I have to be so this won't happen to me again, which is not really you. And that's why I call it a prison because it's a demon that's manifesting as your personality. And you stuck. And you can get so infused with the false self that you forget that you, you don't even know who you are no more. But you know what you want people to know you by. You know you want people to like you. So your little insecurities show up in every decision that you make based on you if you're getting accepted or not accepted. Based on if you got influence with a person or no influence with the person. Your insecurities. I'm going to build a relationship with somebody based on my insecurities, based on if they recognize this false self. And the sad part is, you don't even really want to be the false self, but this is all you have known because you haven't developed your real who you are. You're still in the prison. So you'll go to the awakening and reinvent yourself. You didn't try to reinvent yourself in the boys club, girls club. You didn't try to reinvent yourself in churches. You try to reinvent yourself in Islam. And now we done woke all the way up. You try to reinvent yourself as street credibility, as if you're a gangster, uh, and you're, uh, all that type of stuff. You constantly becoming something else that becomes a prison house. So now I have learned these scriptures so I can get the clap of people, so it can make me feel like I'm somebody. So it can make me feel relevant. I'm finna sing. I'm finna uh, play the drums. I, I'm finna teach. I'm finna uh, put PowerPoint presentation together. I'm gonna do current events. Whatever it takes to make me feel like somebody because I know me being a false self is killing who I really am. So I got to get the best I can at certain things just to be, feel present. Which is a prison. And the enemy has this on autopilot. So we got the infection going in our life. Now, think about this. Now think about all that, and you trying to you trying to use the word. Think about all that, and you using imuna. Think about all that and you praising and all that and you 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 a, a prayer war, you an intercessor. You supplicate. And you who shall let you do all of it? This is why he can let you do his works and look at you and say, Depart from me, I never knew you. You don't even know who you are. Let alone I knowing you. I don't know this entity. I know who you was at six seven years old when you stop developing. That's who I know. I don't know you. I don't know this false self. I ain't resurrect no false self. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Because iniquity performs. Iniquity works. Iniquity masks. Iniquity will give you revelation and wisdom and insight just to stay false. Everything becomes competitive. Everything. Because you're competing with yourself. The false self and the real you. And now everybody becomes a part of a race that they don't know they in. It's just in your mind. Boy, I hope I hope I'm helping somebody. I'm helping myself. 
Because listen, you talking to somebody that done did all this. I almost got killed by the false self. I almost got murdered. By all these things. Trying to be somebody I'm not. And the cold part about all of this, and then you got all that going on, and you keep sowing. <laughs> you keep sowing the darkness as if the house of tell they coming to collect. He said, yeah, you ain't you ain't killed that far. Okay, he'll do you like this, all right? So we would hear a word like this, or like what's been going on in Aruka. And then we'll deal with the inf with the infection. Oh, I recognize the infection. I see this infection on the inside of me. Now I'm finna go get the right. Oh no! This T fell. <laughs> My bad. Y'all, I'm in Malka Ka 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 a little room. This a little hello. Shalom room. She got her little beautiful carpet on the floor and all that up. I just feel some tea on her little carpet. Hello. 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 All right. Um, man, what else? Good night, man. What else? Um, Come on here. Come on, mine. Oh, you ain't going nowhere. Oh, there we, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So now what you'll do, you'll hear the word and you'll go after the infection. So you find what the infection is, right? And then you take all the necessary medicine to heal the infection. If the infection is healed, like you, you, you listen to the... Now, Yeah, let me say this first. You do all the necessary stuff to heal the infection. But if I heal the infection so it's no longer infecting me, have I totally been healed? That's the question. Make a long story short. No. Why? All right, let's look at it like this. If um, I take it like this. If I heal the wound and an infection, am I totally healed? No. Think about it like this. Like, I like dogs, right? So, say if I... Um, Going out here and I'm training the dog, mess with a dog. And all the way, say if I'm younger, and this dog bite me. Right? He come and he bite my he bite me hard and he drew blood and all that type of stuff, right? Alright, so I go to the hospital. I get everything done. I wrap up the wound, all that's that's stupid. Once am I totally healed? whole because it didn't get I allowed it not to get infected no let's say the wound didn't heal and, and there's no more pain and it's just a scar there I'm not totally healed why because I might have made up in my mind that that fear of that pain still controls me so now I'm, I got the infection now, the injury is here, but the fear of the event might make me think I never deal with dogs again. So I might be scared to drive or to ride my bike in the neighborhood if I hear a dog barking. I might be scared to be anywhere around any dog. Why? Because the memory of the pain, which became that tra traumatic event, controls me. And I made the declaration. I made an oath inwardly. 
So what I have to do now, I have to go to the event and heal the memory of what happened to me that way and attack the fear so I'm not controlled by that anymore. How do you correct a memory? Through replacing the memory with a greater memory. What do you mean? When you when you are damaged, when something happens to you, and say I broke my leg or something like that, something happened to me, I go to a doctor. The doctor does the surgery on me. And then gave me the process of healing, let you know healing is a process. So he done the surgery. He gave me exactly what to do. I stop everything that I'm doing in my life and I start focusing on this one area. Why? Even though I got other stuff going on, I stuck, I focus on this one area, right? I do everything that the doctor tell me to do. And I end up, the doctor began to say, he said, if you follow my word, <laughs> if you follow this word, then he prophesies to you. He says, in six months, you will be healed. Now, you will take the word of the doctor, and you will take his prophecy, and you will put your emu eye on it. And he says, it's going to hurt. You're going to have some ups and downs. You're going to have to go through rehabilitation. We're going to work you. We're going to do all that type of stuff, but you will be healed in six months. Now that six months get healed, you ain't all the way healed. He'll come back and say, well, listen, don't fret. Add this to it, and another three months, you'll be he'll give you a prophecy again. You'll be like, Praise Yahushua, I'm healed. Now, that whatever he healed, that surgeon, whatever that he whatever that heal, he heals, whoever heals you, you dedicate yourself to. Whoever gave you the process and it was true, you dedicate yourself to because you recognize that in your memory, they are the healer. So now it don't matter how you might get hurt like that again, your memory is sealed with your healer. And now when you see the scar, you tell the story of who healed you. You might tell the story of what happened to you, but the greater emphasis is on who healed you. Now the memory of that doctor becomes greater than the event of what happened. That's major with Yahushua. Because when you bring Yahushua, he comes and heals the infection. Then he replaced the memory with the process of what he did to heal you. Now you see the scar, but there's no more pain or control. Why? Because the healer has replaced the, 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 the memorable event with his salvation. So now when you see the scar, you think of the healer that you devoted to. And watch this. The scar then becomes your ministry. The scar then becomes your weapon. This is why Yahushua said, to a doubt Thomas, come touch these scars. If you don't believe me, believe the testimony of the wound. Because you seen me crucified. Now let this testimony speak more than my words. The scar. And now, people will get in contact with you in your life. And see the scar. And desire to hear 
who you have been dedicated to of the one that healed the wound. But that's one more thing you have to do. You got to do an investigation of the infection. You have to do the investigation of the memory and replace it with the memory. But the last thing you have to do, or in no particular order, you have to burn down the house that was a safety for you, which really was a prison. And you got to eradicate the false self. And sometimes that false self is so infused with your personality of what you call, what you say makes you strong when you really weak. This false self has protected you. This false self has stood up for you. This false self has made you, have gave you the business that you got and gave you everything that made you who you are. And you realize, you feel like if I lose this false self, I lose who I am. It's just like Yahushua said to the rich young ruler, right? He spoke of, and I say this and I get ready to end. The rich young ruler, he spoke of this. He said, um, rich young ruler said, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Yahushua said, to inherit eternal life, you must keep the commandments. <coughs> And the rich young ruler says, so listen, I've done this since my youth. But Yahushua said, all your worship of keeping the commandments was false. He told him this one thing. And watch what it says in the scripture. It says, before Yahushua made this statement, it says, Yahushua, behold him and loved him him. What? It says Yahushua beloved him and hold him. He's seen where he'd been arrested in his development. And he loved that little boy that was afraid to come out. He loved that little girl that was afraid to come out. And he tested him. And he said, sell all your things and follow me. But remember, his things made it minister to his false self. And he felt like if I had, if I give you this, I give you everything of who I am. And it says that the young man walked away because he had too many possessions. A possession in your soul is when something happens to you. And you feel the right of anger, bitterness, resentment, guilt, shame. You feel the right to feel like this. Now this becomes your possession. And you might have a right to be hateful. You might have a right to be resentful. You might have a right to be upset and to store it. But is it righteousness? And it says he walked away. Because he had too many possessions. Not realizing. In order to follow Yahushua. If any man will follow after me. He, has, he must do what? First. Deny. Watch this. Himself. That denying himself. Is denying the false self. And then follow after me. He couldn't do it and not realizing that if any man that have given up mother, brother, father, sister, brother for my sake shall be in this life receive more. A hundredfold. And some of us in the same boat will do some of the infection work. We'll work on some of the memorable event because of the pain. But the major thing we won't give up it's that false self. So some of us have walked away. 
with many possessions. I challenge you to investigate the points of your pain in your life and find the event that made you create a false personality in which you live by. I don't care how early, I don't care how late it was. This is why some of us are bipolar. This is why some of us deal with schizophrenia. And I ain't even talking about from a scientific perspective. I'm talking about from a bloodline passed down perspective. And this is why when any type of instruction, rebuke, and order come, the first thing that we try to preserve and we try to save is self. The first emotion that comes is self. All right. Praise Yahushua. I hope this was enough to get y'all started this morning. I believe uh, this broker. I believe uh, next um, week we'll get back on the um, the series. The series dealing in. Um, I'm sorry, I was checking out time. Uh, Y'all know what series I'm talking about. I can't remember right now. Uh, Sarah. All right. Um, love y'all. Hope y'all. Y'all listen to this over and over. Rewatch it. Let it get in your ruach, man. Rewatch it. That it minister to you. Um, but all right. Uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, we don't have no announcements or anything like that going on uh, for the rest of this year uh, for right now. Um, pray, Jehusha. All right. Well, I love y'all. Oh, let me announce this. This is just a quick announcement. We're going to do actually, um, we're going to do uh, uh, what it's called promotions. Promotions for this event. During Black History Month, the third weekend in February. Somebody asked, is the partnership open? Yeah, the partnership is open. It stays open. The partnership stays open. But I want everybody to listen. On the third week in um, February, we are going to do a big Reclaiming the Throne soundtrack concert uh, event and what, what what this event gonna be it's going to be it's gonna represent music but it's gonna tell our story almost kind of like it's not it, it kind of like a musical but you know I can't stand musical so it's not gonna be a musical but we it's we are gonna be acting and certain things that's gonna happen it's gonna be for um, it's going to represent our 400 years and it's going to tell our story through song. So each song going to be connected to the next song that identifies what happened to us to the time we was free on our land, to the time we came over here in captivity, all the way up to the, from then, me from um, slavery to the uh, awakening process um, and to reclaiming the throne. And we're going to represent every genre of music, the main genres of music that we have created over here. So it's going to be a huge event. We're going to rent out, rent out this theater, and we want everybody possible um, to make it, if you can, to come there. So right now, 
I'm just going to be talking about it on some of these Young Shones, some of these Sundays. Uh, but I won't, uh, but there will be promotion for it. And it's going to be, nobody have ever done this like we're going to do it. So I won't, it's going to be in Augusta, um, but all the tribe's going to be involved in it. Um, but we want everybody to come because it's going to be huge. Hallelujah. The soundtrack for Reclaiming the Throne. Um, that'll be out um, next year in February. Hallelujah. So I want everybody to know that's coming. And we'll promote it very, very soon. Um, hallelujah. Any questions on that? It will be open to the public, everybody that want to come. You can invite your friends, your family, everybody, whether they're awakened or not awakened, because we're still going to be pushing the movie. So this is going to be for everybody, partners, non-partners, friends, family, everybody that we can get in that, in that place. Um, we want you to come. If you're a music artist, come. So just start preparing now. All right. I just want to kind of announce that. Just start the announcement, but we'll start promoting. Um, get with Chief, and we'll start promoting um, in December for the event and um, everything. And we also got some things coming down. Well, y'all will see. All right. Well, love y'all, and we will see y'all. On the net. oh no okay the, yeah partnership visitation is still open on every second uh, Shabbat uh, visitation so it is open with a uh, Sabbath teachers come back regularly on the live on YouTube well we working on that uh y'all we just got to work with it. we dealing with a lot of in house stuff that we got to get together uh, we're still working on making sure the lives can be in the partners uh, portals and stuff like that so we're still working on all that. But you have it, but it is sometimes that we'll do live services. I know I, I didn't stop doing live services completely because of what I had to deal with, uh, what, what I'm working on. And Chief, uh, he he was doing, started back, but we'll, we'll work it out. We just, y'all just, uh, what we're going to end up doing, though, we are going to have all the old teachings come back on the channel. We was cutting out some of the, um, for reasons that you always showed us, we cutting out some of the worship and and worship and all of that uh but we're gonna start up re-uploading those things will partners be allowed to come to upcoming feasts yes yes um dedications will be open for partners uh to come purim be open for partners to come and then we'll let the partners know about um Pesach also too uh so that's that's gonna happen um will we be able to vent the visit, um, Anderson. Uh, yes, um, Chief, Chief. Oh, that go Chief that Shalom, Chief. Infinite honors to the Chief. Um, hallelujah. Yeah, they, they're still working on constructing area an area. Uh, so, all, you know, the visitors can be able to come. So, you know, he'll give the, when all that is done, it's finished. So, yeah, I would say keep, I just email Rebirth Anderson, and um, they will let you know once all that is, uh, all that is done. Um, but each of the assemblies are now uh, open. I know it's a lot, we got a lot of emails about this past Shabbat, but we had some in-house stuff. So I told them, let's wait till the Shabbat in December um, that y'all be able to uh, still come uh some of the other um assemblies are open on the second shabbat the only assembly that's not open right now to taking partners in is okc hallelujah but yeah we're working on all of that it's gonna get done uh any other any other questions But when we can, uh, the lives would be, some of the lives would be coming back forth. We just got to work on it. But visitation is open. All right, so if that's everything, we're going to holler at y'all. Uh, we're going to be there by the Shalom. And we'll see you on the...
next one. Man, great, George. Mm -hmm. Thank you.